Sarah Mason. I'm Kristen Hall. And you work at Beast and Forest. Did you actually start the company? I did. I started at Beast and Forest, and then I also have The Nest, Birmingham and Avondale. Oh, the nice. event space. So, and you're with Mason Music, right? Yes. And um, recently started painting, so it's taken up a lot of my extra time. So, The Nest, is that where um, Jake used to make candles? It is where Jake used to make candles, okay. and so now he's your neighbor, right? Yeah, he moves on. Mm -hmm. yep. um, yeah, we had a scent made for our foundation to kind of help boost sales. And he okay. let us in, like smell every little thing, and come up with our own scent. Oh, nice. Yeah. What, what did you end up using? It was like a real um, cedar. It was called Cedar Creek. Okay. And it had like cedar and I hear I think lavender. Okay. It's a, it's a good scent. It's a little masculine for me, but it turned right. out good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it is a guy candle company. It is a guy candle yeah. company. It's the great bear. Yeah, so... And I'm sure a lot of that crew comes in a lot to the restaurant. They do, yeah. That crew comes into the restaurant, and it's kind of funny because we also, on our off days, we go to Woodlawn Cycle. So oh. it's really nice to kind of keep it in the neighborhood. And we live in Crestwood, so. Love it's Woodlawn Cycle. Mm -hmm. It's all good. Um, one thing I was talking about earlier is I'm playing at the Woodlawn Street Market Saturday. Oh, nice. So I've recently just started my own band, okay. which has been a long time coming. I, um, have taught kids for the past 10 years and kind of helped them grow in their musicianship and everything. I've been always writing my own stuff, but never taking it to the next level. Okay. And so finally, when my students that were graduating were like forming bands and asking me to play backup, I was like, um, I should I'm ready to do my own, own thing now. Right. Right. So the album's being released probably in the next month or two, but oh, nice. it came up with a name. Say so what's the name? Names are important. Yeah, it's really hard. So... Do you watch a lot of film or TV? I don't. <laughs> I watch a lot of dishes right now. <laughs> you know, cafe life. Yeah. Well, you could always watch TV and do the dishes. I could. That's what I do at home. possible, there. right. There's a show that's called The Peaky Blinders. Okay. And it's based out of Birmingham, England. Okay. It's like nice. right after World War One and all these gangs. Well, I'm obsessed with the show, and I wrote a song based on one of the characters, and I wanted to come up with a name that was kind of from that part of the world. And so I came up with the name Yardley. Nice. But then I realized it's like this English it's, it's, soap company. Yeah, exactly. It's like a lavender sort of soap company. Well, the background of the logo is lavender. Well, there you yeah. go. So there. So tell me how Feast and Forest began. Sure. So it actually started as Baking Bandits, um, which is sort of the pastry side of things. Um, and I partnered with Victor King to start Feast and Forest. And so um, the Baking Bandits actually started when I wanted to sort of like teach my daughters how to bake. Um, I was really um, interested in sort of them like growing up in the kitchen and like that really being sort of like an art for them. And so we baked a whole bunch and then we actually went around our neighborhood and rang the doorbell and left treats. Mm -hmm. And so that's how we became known as the Baking Bandits. And so um, you just had a passion for baking? Yeah, just a passion for baking and um, a lot of seasonal baking. So most bakeries, like if you say bakery, most people think cupcakes or cakes or something that's super sweet, and I like to do like seasonal baking. So it was a way for me to sort of teach them about seasonality of food and the garden and, you know, make pastries. So, um, so yeah, things kind of grew from there. We did the farmer's market, sort of doing all the markets and pop-up shops, um, and then I was kind of ready to have a home. You know, like yeah. you... You can make out of your kitchen so much, but when you're starting to make things in like the dozens beyond dozens, oh, yeah. you know, it's kind of time to have it yeah. at home. So um, Victor and I actually met um, doing a collaboration, kind of a collaboration dinner. And so it was like, I really needed a business partner just to kind of help grow the business. Um, and it's been really nice to have, I was actually kind of afraid of partnership because like, you know, two people's ideas, especially yeah. in the creative world. Um, but yeah, so we partnered and we opened Feast like seven months ago downtown, so it's been really good. And it's interesting to see like how like your our idea was to open up sort of like a European kind of cafe coffee shop. Um, and it has that vibe to it, but like people ended up falling in love with brunch. And so, and just falling in love with some other things. So it's um, it's been good, it's been to see. What's your signature dish? Gosh, um, I would say for me, like galettes, tarts, sort of reform stuff, because, um, you know, it, it's been really fun, especially like with the partnerships we have for fruits and veg and that kind of stuff from like Jones Valley and other places, yeah. like they'll bring in blackberries and then like 
a few minutes later, like, I can make a tart. You know, I can make something. So that's when really, I think that's maybe what sets us apart a tiny bit, mm-hmm. is in terms of just, you know, seasonality. Yeah. And it's been really good. That's very cool. You're incorporating other parts of like, nonprofits. And- sure. Absolutely. Yeah, and it's been fun. I mean, like, building a part, like, building a community of, mm-hmm. um, you know, of our guests, but of, like, farmers and community and that kind of stuff has been really, it's been good. It's just breakfast and lunch, or do you do dinner? We don't do dinner yet. Okay. Um, we have um, we have plans to do dinner service. Um, maybe at another, like, we've, we've got some things percolating. Very so, cool. Yeah, it's good. I mean, it's kind of tiny in there. It's tiny, so we have our eye on some spaces, yeah. you know, just to kind of grow. Like, things grow yeah. really fast, and so, um, you know, life presents interesting things, interesting places. I know with uh, Mason Music, our first studio is like not the ideal design right but the other two that we have is like the perfect build out so we're like what are we going to do with the first First you know you like walk in the lobby and it's just like tiny right our other store is like this giant lobby i don't know it's really hard to make all of your stores equal but sure well and when you started mason music like what was your like what was your vision for it and how did that like change or was it sort of like we really want to do this and things just kind of blossomed that way like did it grow faster or just how has it changed because it's been interesting for us to start with an idea and then it sort of take on a life of its own even though it's yours right it's been really really interesting yeah it's been really crazy how quickly it's grown um I think the, p- the thing that people really like about Mason Music is the connection that they have with the teacher, mm-hmm. that one-on-one relationship, but then it's also a part of a community. Right. So it's different than just going to your neighborhood piano lady's house or whatever. Right, exactly. You're a um, piano lady. Yeah, you're people old piano yeah. lady. Right. right. That'll be me, not that far off. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> but we used to drive all over Birmingham. Oh, sure. And so we wanted to have a place where people actually felt like they fit in and would have an outlet other than sports, right? Because in Birmingham, in the South, pretty much anywhere now, it's sports, sports, and that's the focus of everything. Um, And we kind of joke and say that that's like our biggest competition. Right, it's football. Um, It's football, football, right. But once kids are coming in and then they see that they can play music with their friends, it's a whole different world. They start to take on a different passion. Right. They want to contribute to their little band, and they practice a lot more than they would. Right, exactly. So... Um, For us, it was more of just a, it just kind of developed into the need of a building to Mm -hmm. facilitate exactly what we wanted to do. That was build community. Nice. And how long was it before, let's say you started your sort of flagship store, your first store, how long was it before you opened another store? Um, So we opened in April of 2012, and then we opened in September of 2013. So it was like back to back. And then I think we waited two years at Bluff Park. Um, and we're actually looking at space on 280 and 119. Right. Yeah. Which is crazy, but crazy. you'll soon know two locations. It's just like, or moving, it just opens up the whole new box of worms. I mean, it's just can of worms. Box Boxes, of, can. Box of scones. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. It's just, I think the main thing for us is finding other people, maybe not in music businesses, but in restaurants that have multiple locations and use each other as like, bouncing ideas off and sure um yeah I think for us we really underestimated the not the importance but like for lack of another word like importance of the actual physical space like we the same thing like you were saying about your own store like your first store you didn't really plan on it sort of taking the shape that it did and so your other stores you learned a lot you know from that first build out I think we feel the same way which is you know, we thought we were going to be kind of a quiet cafe, like uh-huh. pastry shop, and it turned into a restaurant. And so we didn't really set up the space for a restaurant. And so as we look for other spaces, it's kind of exciting because you're like, oh, wow, now I know about these things. Yeah. Or like, I really underestimated the need for this thing and the things that we, you know, so you can focus on different things. But it's having an actual tangible space, like the the geography, of course, like where it's located, but just it, the square footage and footprint is is interesting how it molds your ideas um, and really what you want to do. Yeah, and I think, like what you were saying when you open, people crave that community of even a place to go eat. Mm-hmm. And so I think people love being downtown and having a place to go eat breakfast. Right. And they do people like love to hang out there for a long time? You know, it's funny, they love to hang out there, yeah. and then we get 
crushed for lunch. And so it's been for us, it's been like a whole subset of customers is very different than this other set. And like both are really important to us. Um, so it's interesting about creating place. And I think for me, um, that's really what I'm passionate about, like with the Nest of Birmingham, like Nest Birmingham and Avondale, and I guess Feast and Forest and like whatever else we come up with is like creating place and space for people to enjoy, you know, their time together. That's why we really make food. Like, right. Because you're creating memories. And, you know, music is so similar, too. Like, it can be such a, like, if you went to a concert, it's such a, like, point in time right. that you think about a lot and remember who you were with and how you felt. Like, we, you know, I feel that way about, like, a really lovely meal, you know? Yeah. And so it's like a, it's like a time stamp. Like the smells and everything you the remember. The smells and, like, the things you remember. And there was someone, like, really funny around the corner. Or you remember, like, what your friends or your family or whoever you were with like was experiencing at that time and for me like I always think about where we were and what kind of food we had like just those memories yeah um so it's been interesting to be able and exciting to think about creating new spaces and more spaces and that area is great that part of Birmingham is probably my favorite part of the city and Love it. I've gotten to know it more because I've done art crawl every single month oh nice for the past eight months nice so I'm always in front of El Barrio. Exactly. And you get to know the bartenders and all the people. And I mean, I just am surprised with the people that don't know about that Second Avenue area. It's still pretty crazy to us that when we say something like El Barrio or we get a bamboo or, you know, whatever. And honestly, like Feast and Forest for that matter, people are like, oh, I never heard of El Barrio. And you're like... Join the uh, <laughs> wait list for every Friday night. I'm like, like, how do you not know about? I like, don't either. I don't understand. You know, and I think again, it's just an interesting. Like, if you live downtown or you work downtown, you know the Renaissance has been happening mm -hmm. really for decades now. And so I still feel like there's such a detachment between like how amazing downtown is and um, the city is versus sort of some of the other right. areas. Um, and it's really right now it's destination, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's interesting is like. Birmingham and downtown as a city is still a destination, so just keep on tugging. I know. I I would love to have a Mesa Music downtown. Sure. But the the one in Woodlawn, it'll be such a different ship compared to the others because it's will be all nonprofit funding. And so right. I really want to create the same kind of musical community for underprivileged families where the parents can come and hang out or sure. you know, they feel like they can be included. And, and it's not so segregated. And I know, like, especially right now, it's a crazy time. But right. I just feel really called to to bring our gifts of bringing the community together to that area. And I know a lot of people are already doing that in Woodlawn. And I think that's one of the really interesting things is to watch that really grow. Actually, my very first pop-up shop for Baking Bandits was in Woodlawn, across oh, wow. the street from Confess. And the they were... Um, no, actually, so there's a building, like, diagonal from the parking lot. Um and um, it was just an empty space, and so it was right next. Actually, um, Rev yeah. kind of put that whole thing on, and it was it's really so it's really interesting. I live just up the street, and so oh. it's really interesting to see how like seeds that are planted, like really for me, that's where I got my start. And actually, Becca Fox was like yeah. my and Jeffrey, like they were my very first customers. Of, like, Aww. and it, it forged a bond between us. Like we're still friends now, and like when I think of her or them, I just. Yeah, there's like all fond memories of like literally my very first customers. And I remember like opening the door thinking like this was such a bad idea for me <laughs> to do this. Like I really should not. Like I was working full time and I had two little kids and I was like this was a really dumb idea to like take a week of vacation and open a pop-up bakery. And, you know, I had no idea. Like I just felt that like one of my friends had talked me into it. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, it's not, whatever, this will be fun. And, you know, now here I am owning a restaurant and... You, know. you just never know what lies ahead. You know, it's exciting. Yeah. I, I think that the future of Birmingham is kind of in limbo right now. Right. You know, there's so many great things happening downtown. And I just hope that it continues to expand and include and just kind of help everyone feel like they're all together. Sure. Because I know that that's something, being from um, the Midwest, moving south, it's, it's different down Sure. There. Absolutely. And I think that... I think everyone here that I've met so far is so inclusive. And you know, it's interesting, like a lot of people, when we thought about opening up a shop, they were like, well, where are you going to open? You know, you, you could open in all kinds of areas. And, you know, it was like, oh, we're going to open downtown. And they're like, I mean, 
do you, do you really want to do that? And I'm like, absolutely. Like, yeah, I cannot imagine what we do, like being in another community. Mm -hmm. Like I feel so confident about yeah. continuing to invest downtown. Cause like, I think, I mean, we still have a lot of things that we have to work on, but I feel like there's so much energy. Like it's, Birmingham, yeah. it's good. Birmingham is a very hip place to be right now. <laughs> right. I really think it is. I mean, you even go up to Nashville and everyone there is like the music scene there is so great. The music scene here is great. It's great. Yeah. I, you know, I've played at Saturn. I've played at all the, you know, Iron City, Work Play, those places. Sure. And they're great. Right. And the great thing is that being a smaller city, you can build relationships with all those people. Sure. Well, there's no, yeah, like there's no way that we could do what we do in another city. No. Like, it, and it's great because, yeah, you're building relationships, but it's it's big enough and there's enough energy to, like, be able to actually do something, but you can still, like, make a mark. And I think right. that's for us. Like, that's really interesting and empowering and something that you don't think about necessarily, but you realize, like, we're really changing the way that music is done in this town or the way mm -hmm. that food is presented. Like, it's not just, hey, I'm teaching this kid violin, you know, right. or, hey, I just made biscuits and now you can buy them. But, like, we're really changing sort of what people are excited about. It was nice to meet nice you, Nice to meet you, too. Thank you. Well, I'm good. Well, I'll bring the kiddos into Mason. And Likewise. I'm serious about the event. Yeah, we should do it. Okay, good, thanks.